Hello and welcome to another does to hue tutorial video. This time we're going to be taking a look at how we can get this character onto the UE5 mannequin skeleton uh, with a complete control rig, including facial controls. In terms of preparation inside of Does Studio, uh, I've just loaded the uh, G9 example ROM with baseboard onto this character. Um, if you don't want to load the entire ROM onto the character, for example, if you don't need facial controls, at the bare minimum, you're going to want to load the retargeting poses. Uh, and in particular, we need frame one of the retargeting pose, which is our um, UE5 pose. This UE5 retargeting pose is critical to this workflow. Uh, and there might be scenarios where we actually want to adjust it, but we'll take a look at that later in the video. Other than that, the character and it, the clothing are both subdivision level one. And I've gone ahead and disabled collisions on the clothing. So that's all we need to do to prepare in Daz Studio. So I'm just going to go ahead and export this character in the same way that I've shown in previous videos as both an FBX animation and an Alambic cache. And then we'll head over to Houdini. So here we are inside Houdini. I've gone ahead and prepared this character. Um, I'll just quickly walk through the critical paths to getting it onto the UE5 mannequin skeleton. So starting on the skeleton node, we obviously want to make sure that the target skeleton is UE5 mannequin. Now this reference frame, if you recall in Does Studio, our UE5 retargeting pose was on frame one. So this is set to frame one. If you happen to put your retargeting pose on another frame in Does Studio, you can change it here. We need to add the IK bones in order for foot IK to work properly. Uh, and I've gone ahead and added these other helper bones as well, even though they aren't strictly necessary. That's all we need to do really. Um, Obviously on our poses at node, I've loaded up the G9 example ROM with faceboard. That will give us all the face morphs and controls. And so now we can just export the character with the selected options. Once that's done, we'll jump over to Unreal Engine. Okay, so here we are inside of Unreal Engine. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is add the third person level feature pack. Once that's done, I'm going to open up third person level, just going to quickly fix up the lighting. I hate the uh, default lighting that comes with the third person level blueprint. Something like that'll do. So now I'm going to go to where I want to put this character. I'm going to right click and import. On the import options dialog box, there's a couple of things we want to make sure we're setting up correctly. Uh, the first is that for the skeleton, we want to target the SK mannequin skeleton. We want to tick use T0 as ref pose. Make sure that use T0 as ref pose is ticked. Do not tick the update skeleton reference pose. I repeat, do not tick the update skeleton reference pose. That will mess things up. Um, we are using morph targets, so we want to import morph targets. Make sure that's ticked. The rest, I think, is fairly optional, depending on how you want to do things. I'm not creating a physics asset. You don't need to import the animations. Uh, and I'm also not creating materials. I've already set up materials for this character before. So with that, I'm going to hit Import All. OK, so that's finished importing. I can close this log window. First thing I'm going to do is open up our character here. And I'm going to make sure we're on the skeleton tree and come to this cog in the top right or wherever it is on your layout uh, and select show retargeting options. I'm going to right click on the pelvis and then I'm going to select this option, recursively set translation retargeting animation relative. This is important for making sure our character stays in its correct pose. And the last thing I'm going to do here is just on the pelvis still, I'm just going to set it back to animation scaled. So pelvis is animation scaled, everything under the pelvis is animation relative. And I'm going to save that and close that for now. We'll come back to that. So the next thing I'm going to do is just to check that this character is working properly on the UE5 mannequin skeleton. So I'm going to come down to third person uh, blueprints, open up the third person character blueprint, select mesh, and then here under the mesh section, I'm going to change the skeletal mesh over to the character we just imported, which is KT9. And click compile and save that. And I'm just going to test it. We can see our character is now working on the UE5 mannequin skeleton. We have put IK working. If 
But at this stage, we don't have things like joint corrective morphs or any facial animation controls. So let's look at that now. So what we need to do is basically prime the mannequin skeleton with all of the animation curves that uh, Daz to Hue requires. So some of the curves, so the morph targets, for example, were created when we imported our character. There are some others that aren't on this skeleton at the moment. That's because we just added it to our project at the start of this video. So unlike the Daz to Hue native skeletons, I couldn't include the SK mannequin skeleton with everything already set up. So we need to sort of prime it ourselves. Um, but it's relatively straightforward. So what I'll do is come to the Daz to Hue content section into the mannequin folder and I'll go to the corresponding folder depending on what our character's base figure type is. So in this case, I'm using a Genesis 9 figure. So I'll come to the Genesis 9 folder. Now, what I want to do is select all three of our pose assets here. And then I'm going to right click and replace skeleton. I'm going to select that SK mannequin skeleton. And as I say, that will prime the skeleton with what these pose assets need. I'm going to do something similar for our animation blueprint for Genesis 9. I'm going to right click it and assign skeleton. Again, we'll select the SK mannequin skeleton. And then as one final step, and this is optional. Um, if you want to use the uh, AR kit um, facial animation mapping, we need to come to the common folder and right click and replace skeleton and again select the SK mannequin skeleton. Now, this AR kit facial mapping is only uh, relevant for Genesis 9 and Genesis 8.1 figures, it won't work for Genesis 8 or 3 figures. So, after that, I'm going to save all just to make sure everything's saved. Now I'm going to go back to where our character is and open it up one last time. Under the asset details section, I'm going to search for post. Under post process and blueprint, I'm going to select this AVP DTH Genesis 9 UE5. Again, you would select the one that corresponds with your base figure type. We now have joint corrective morphs and all the facial morphs working on this character. The last thing I need to do is add the control rig to it. So again, under Asset Details, I'm going to search for Rig. Under Default Animation Rig, I'm going to select CRDTH Genesis 9. Now make sure you select the DTH Control Rig. Don't use the Control Rig that UE includes with the SK Mannequin Skeleton. So after that, we can save this and close that. And we'll just make sure our character is still working. So now it's working as before, but now we have uh, Joint Corrective Morphs, for example, working. So to test that the control rig is working, we can now drag this character out into the level. And I'll come up and add a level sequence. Under track, I'll select our character. You can see now it gets the control rig added to it. At this point, we can start to manipulate the character. We will come up to global controls and show face controls. Just make sure our facial controls are working. Which they are. And that's basically it in terms of getting a DAS character onto the UE5 mannequin with complete control rigs. You might recall at the start of this video, I mentioned that there may be occasions where you need to adjust the UE5 retargeting pose in DAS Studio uh, before we export our character through the workflow. One example of where you might need to do that is if the character's body shape is such that um, when the arms are sort of down by the sides, it will clip through the character's body. So this Roger figure, who's a Genesis 9 figure, um, is one example of this. So if I was to process this character exactly as we just did um, with the default UE5 retargeting pose. This is how it would look in Unreal Engine. You can see for this character, its arms are very much clipping through its body. Obviously this is because the UE5 mannequin was built with a slimmer character in mind. Um, however, this character is quite heavy set, so 
um, the default sort of idle animation um, has the arms such that it's clipping through the body like this. Now, yeah, there are ways to fix this inside of Unreal Engine um, itself, but I typically find it's easier to fix it inside of Daz Studio, uh, and it certainly means that you you are not incurring a performance cost for fixing that inside an animation blueprint, for example. So the way to fix that sort of thing is before we export our character uh, and take it through the workflow we went through previously, we come to frame one, which is our UE5 retargeting pose. We can just, for example, bring the arms up a bit. I bring them up, say, 25 degrees for each arm. Oops. Now, if I was to export this character with this new UE retargeting pose, where we've just raised the arms a little, this is the result we will get in Unreal Engine. You can see now the idle animation has the arms raised slightly, uh, and that will carry through all animations. So the running will keep the arms raised slightly. It just ends up looking better for these sorts of characters. So I just wanted to point that out, that you are free to alter the UE5 retargeting pose before you export and process your character, uh, depending on the character's body shape or anything else you want to adjust. So that's really it in terms of getting our DAS characters onto the UE5 mannequin skeleton with uh, complete controls. Hope you found that useful and I'll see you in the next video.